Give it to me, then. Captain Smith wants a word with you. He stole the stomach. What is it? My sister Ida. She's married to a bloke called Fortescue. And a right couple they are too. Oh? Well, it come to me just now. They want a boy to work for them, a lad about Peter's age. To work? I reckon if I talk to them, they might find jobs for all three on you. Would they, please? Oh, well, I can't promise nothing, mine. But they'll be at Rocks Hall for a week or two, and that's on our route. How wonderful! Be nice if we could warn them we was coming, though. You could write a letter. I'm not what you might call a literary man. We'd write a letter for you. I've got a stamp. Mm, that's it, then. Jim, you really think it was him? Well, he is friendly with Wilberforce. He could have put the note in the dog's collar. I wonder. How can I tell Lady Corkberry? You tell Mrs. Smedley and she tells Mrs. Tanner. But they might think it's a stupid idea. Can't I tell her myself? Of course not. Very well. I shall write her a note. She wants Peter to do. Didn't I tell you? Well, since you ask, I only hope he's cut out for it. Me? Go on the stage? You've got to. It's our only hope. In front of people? In a theatre? It's not a proper theatre. Mr and Mrs Fortescue take this company from one town to another. They put on plays whenever they can. I'm too shy. Peter, please, for our sake. Margaret, I can't do it. Oh. <clears throat> Mrs. Smith. That's all right, love. I'll be all right. No, it gets me sometimes, but if I just have a little rest, I'll get over it. Who's with the horse? Uh, Horatio, but we can't go far. Why not? What's well, Walden Tunnel coming up, and we won't get through it. Not until at least... Oh. Well, if you can manage to steer, I'll do the rest with Captain Smith. You? We've got to get to Roxall somehow. Got her in, that's good. Leg it down. Goodbye. Bye. Fine girl. Hard work, isn't it? It's all right, once you get used to it. You're a Roman, Margaret Thursday. Pity you weren't born a boy. You'd have finished up an admiral at sea. Thank you. And I don't want to be anyone but me.
over to me. You stick things out like that, and you finish up far in this world. So you did put that note in Wilberforce's collar? Yes, my lady. Do you know where the children are? Yes, my lady. At least I, I do and I don't. Go on. I left them with me folks on the Crusader. On the canal boat, you mean? The kids will be safe, I know. And one day they'll be back. Where are the children now? Well, that's what I don't rightly know. It depends what trip they're doing. Mm. We could have the police make a search. Oh, no, milady, please. The boys will be so frightened. Please don't get me folks into trouble. I know I've lost my job, but they've got nothing else. And If I don't inform the police, is there any other way of tracing them? Yes, milady. If I stay down by the cut... Uh, by the canal, I mean and ask folks on other boats, they'll get word in a day or two. Very well, you will do so, until the children are found. Yes, my lady. You'll then return to your work, as usual. Thank you, my lady. Thank you. Get your head in that. You can't be an actor with hair that colour. I don't want to be an actor. Oh, yes, you do. The rest of the dye won't come off. Well, rub harder. Keep still. We're going to see Mr. and Mrs. Fortescue, and you've got to look your best. Mrs. Tanner, you can tell the staff his lordship will be returning tomorrow night. He's bringing a guest, Sir Edward Delaware. Yes, my lady. One other thing. The girl, Lavinia. I should like her to meet Sir Edward. Yes, my lady. I would like you to do something, if you can, about her hair. And perhaps you could take her into town and find her address. Something suitable for a young lady. I'll do what I can. Thank you, Mrs. Tanner. <laughs> Not my sins, my frailty. Good heavens, I do, if you don't know the lines now. Brother! Dear brother! Brother? What are you talking about? Oh, it's them. Darling! Brother! Darling, how wonderful to see you. Hello. Welcome, good friends. Oh, welcome to our humble playhouse. Well, you got my letter, then. This very morning. <laughs> Can I believe my eyes? Little Lord Fauntleroy. I beg your pardon? Yes. A velvet suit, curly hair. It could be. The answer to our prayers. This is Peter Beresford. Say how do you do, Peter? 
Good afternoon. I hope you're both feeling well. Beautiful. Diction good. Reminds me of how you speak, Ida. Proper refined. <laughs> and who is this? Horatio Beresford. Oh, how sweet. Mm, promising for younger parts. <laughs> well, boy, have you ever hacked it before? No, sir, I haven't, and I don't... Oh, no matter. You have the looks and the voice. Leave the rest to me. What Mr Fortescue doesn't know about acting, you could write on your fingernail. Have you ever heard of Little Lord Fauntleroy? Yes, sir, I've read it. Splendid. Well, the book has been adapted for the stage. With you to play Cedric, we can do it. But... I shall appear as the Earl, the boy's grandfather. He's magnificent as a member of the aristocracy. Magnificent. Ida will play the boy's mother. Dearest, he calls her charmingly as ever. <laughs> Rehearsals will begin tomorrow. We'll be able to see it on our way back north. Uh, thank you, dear friend, for bringing these boys. We'll take both of them. I'm Margaret Thursday. Oh, she's been with them, you see. She's been like a... like a kind of sister to them. Sorry. We can take the boys, but not the girl. What? Hmm. She's not even pretty. Thank you very much, but I wouldn't work for you if I was starving. I'll be famous one day. I don't know how, but I will, and you'll be sorry. How dare you? Margaret's the nicest girl in the world, and the prettiest. Except Vinia. Except Lavinia, and we're not going anywhere without her. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, Perhaps we spoke a bit hasty. More coffee, Sir Edward? Uh, no, no, thank you very much. Drop more brandy, that's what you need, old chap. I think perhaps I will. Yes, yes. Phoebe's child, but my own grandchild, it, it seems too much to hope. We could be mistaken. Yes, yes, I know. Lavinia is ready, my lady. Have a sip of that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Show her in, Mrs. Tanner. True. Come here, Lavinia. Do you know who this gentleman is? Sir Edward Delaware from Castle Donoghue, my lady. So I'm told. Sir Edward once had a daughter called Phoebe. When she was very young, she fell in love with a servant and ran away from home. Sir Edward has never seen her since. A note was all she left. Maybe she's dead now. But it is possible that she had children. A daughter who looks, who looks exactly like her. If there are any children, Sir Edward wishes to find them. Can you help him, Lavinia? Mother once talked about a tree by a river with a swing on it and a little wooden house that she played in. And the curtains that she sewed herself. Made of pink chiffon. Oh, 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 oh. I knew it, of course. I knew it all along. Wretched woman, you'll leave this house tonight. Oh, no, forgive. What do you ask me to forgive? Forgive not my sins, but my frailties. Is mercy too much to ask? Aye, it is. A woman has no right to mercy. A woman is but a thing for men to play with. A woman is frail and... Uh... 
Very well, I will go. Very well, I will go. But I will never return. Ha! Who will care for you now? I will. Mother! <laughs> Thanks, love. It went right out of my head. I thought you were beautiful. Oh, did you? I wish I could do it. He's your granddad, isn't he? There's been some talk downstairs, I can tell you. He's a gentleman, a toff. That makes you a lady. What are you doing here? Aren't they giving you a guest room? But I want to stay with you until I go. Taint right for a lady to share a room with a scullery hand. But, Clara, I'm still your friend. Please. All right, I forgive you. Clara, isn't it wonderful? He wants us all to live with him in Ireland. And he's just as anxious about the boys as I am. But you don't even know if they're still on the canal. But where else? There is one place. Someone who Margaret knew. I remember her telling us about her now. Who brought her up. Her name was Hannah. If you'll wait here, Rector, I'll tell Miss Sylvia and Miss Selina that you're here. Hannah, it was really you that I've come to see. It's about Margaret Thursday. Oh? I had a letter this morning from the Archdeacon. You may remember that it was he who advised us to send Margaret to the orphanage. I remember. Well, it seems that Margaret and two boys have run away. Yes, I know. You know. The police came to see us, making inquiries. But have you seen Margaret? No, I knew she wouldn't come here. She knows we can't keep her, or we'd never have sent her away in the first place. Yes, of course. What else did the Archdeacon say? He says, uh, I owe you an apology. The orphanage was not the happy place I believed it to be. It seems there was a cruel matron. She has now been replaced with an excellent person, and I pray that Margaret Thursday will be found. A cruel matron. So that was it. I knew there must be something very wrong to make Margaret run away. Poor Hannah. You must be very worried. One day, when she's ready, Margaret will write to me. Till then, I know she can look after herself as well as any girl alive. Mind it? <laughs> By heaven, yes. I'm very sorry if you mind it. No, no, no! With feeling, boy, feeling! <clears throat> this is a most important scene. The wretched Minna has informed you that you're not Lord Fauntleroy after all. You're left with your grandfather, who is desolate with grief. <laughs> I might have known, I might have known. It is like him. He was a disgrace to me from the first hour. It is like him, yes, it is like him. Is it true what she says? Have I just become a boy again? I don't know. She says so, Fauntleroy. Do you, do you mind it very much? Mind it? Uh, by heaven, yes. I'm very sorry if you mind it. Will they take Dearest's house away from her? You love this old man. You're sorry for him. Sound as if you are. No! I don't like acting. I won't do it. Peter, you must do it. I can't. Yes, you can. I'll show you. Lean on me, Grandpa. Lean on me. You see? And then he says that bit, and you say, is it true what she says? Have I really turned into just a boy again? Uh, I don't know. She, she says so, Fauntleroy. Do you, do you mind very much? Mind it? Uh, by heaven, yes. I'm very sorry if you mind it. Now, see if you can do it. But Margaret... You can do it. I do. Yes. Yes. All she needs is a blonde wig. She'll be magnificent. What? Uh, you, my dear. You are little Lord Fauntleroy. A library. 
You've got a library. One of the best in Ireland, if I do say it myself. Peter will be in heaven. He's a boy after my own heart, from what you say. And stables, too. Horry will like to ride when he grows up. You know, these things have always meant so little to me, until now. Mother never told us who you were. She said that she'd done wrong and that we should never expect help from anyone. What happened to uh, your father? He stole some money and ran away. To South America, we think. Mother was glad he'd gone, although it meant she had to look after the three of us. I think she'd be happy now, Sir Edward. Grandfather. Grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon, my lady. It's all right, Robert. But he insisted. Silence! Well? They're at Roxham. The old barn at Roxham. This is the most exciting day I've had for a great many years. When a boy turns into an earl all at once, it gives him a curious sensation. <laughs> and I was thinking of something else. What else, my dear? I was thinking that soon we must leave this little house. Yes, dear. We've liked this little house, haven't we, dearest? Yes, said he. Lean on me, Grandpa. Lean on me. On you? Yes, I'll lean on you for a moment. Oh, I might have known, I might have known. It is like him. He was a disgrace to me from the first hour. It is like him. She says so. Oh, Harry. This is wonderful. Where did you get this frock from? I'll tell you all about it. But first, I want you to meet your grandfather. Will they take Dearest's house away from her? No. They can take nothing from her. That other boy, he will have to be your boy now. Live with you? In a real castle? If you will do me the honor, please. It is impossible ever to thank you both enough. Lord Corkbury. Yes, you I kept this one. I'm sorry, but I've read it now. You don't understand, my lad. You don't understand. Yes, I do. You have me, and I have you, and we both have dearest. Don't be sorrowful. If she were here, she would comfort you. Why, she is here. She is quite near us in her new house. And this is the time that the light will be there for me to see. Yes, there it is. There it is. And she'll be near it, saying good night to us. Good night, like this. God keep you all the night. And God bless you all the day. Not champagne, I fear, but if you will join our humble celebration, my lord. <laughs> With the greatest of pleasure. Thank Here you. we are. Real gentry, just like your rider. I've uh, got a drop of gin, if you like. You're very kind. Me live with you in a castle. So we'd all be together. Come and meet him. Come on, Harry. Sir 
Grandfather, yes, Margaret's just coming. Oh, very well. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> yes, I was thinking Margaret would be very good as children. May I congratulate you upon your splendid performance. Thank you. It is wonderful care of my grandsons you've taken, and it would be a great pleasure if you'd come to live with us. I, I treat you as a daughter. Thank you very much, Sir Edward. But I don't want to be anyone's daughter. I may never know who my mother is, but I have friends, Hannah and the Rector. I still have one stamp left. I could ask them to come and see me act. But Margaret... Margaret, you must come with us. Yes. Oh, I would like to live with you all. But you see, I'm Margaret Thursday, and I'm going to make my name famous. <laughs> and so you will, my dear. Mr Fortescue is never mistaken. Then all I say is, raise your glasses, ladies and gents, to Margaret Thursday. May God bless her and luck go with her. To Margaret Thursday.